Join us on an adventure through the stunning landscapes of Ireland. Experience the breathtaking views of rolling green hills, historic castles and rugged coastlines as we wind our way through this charming country. The scenic worlds of Ireland provide the perfect backdrop for a thrilling and unforgettable motorcycle experience. Our adventure commences in England and Wales before crossing into Dublin. Over the course of seven days we'll traverse Ireland's southern and western coastlines, finally concluding the journey with an exploration of Northern Ireland. So this is day number four of the tour and just to kind of wrap up um, the previous few days which were just mostly trying to get to Ireland. Sebastian and I met up in Rotterdam to take the ferry across from Rotterdam to Hull in England and uh, it's an overnight ferry so you get there the next morning and if you really want to speed it up you can actually make it on the same day to another ferry that will take you to Dublin. So you can get to Dublin on day number two at the end of day number two. We didn't do that. We went to Wales and took a little detour after we left the ferry in Hull and just kind of enjoyed the uh, Snowdonian National Park, which is quite nice. Then we stayed the night in uh, close to Holyhead, which is the ferry port that will take you to Dublin. It's a three hour ferry ride. It's a large ferry that will then take you to Dublin. We skipped Dublin entirely. This is not the kind of trip to do sightseeing uh, in the city. It's worth visiting, of course, but uh, we made sure we got out of that place as quickly as possible and then went to the Wicklow mountain range, uh, which is really close to Dublin. So that gave us a glimpse of what we are likely to see in the next few days traveling Ireland and Scotland and yeah, a few clips of that. The Wicklow Mountains form the largest continuous upland area in Ireland. They occupy the whole centre county Wicklow and stretch outside its border into the counties of Dublin, Wexford and Carlow. Where the mountains extend into County Dublin, they are known locally as the Dublin Mountains. So after we saw the Wicklow Mountains, there was a good section of just straight roads to get us to our location of last night, uh, which was kind of off the beaten path a little bit. And uh, we had an early night, uh, slept a long time because we we're still tired <laughs> from the journey of getting here. So this is a full day today of just traveling smaller roads and we'll be entering the Wild Atlantic Highway which is going to take us clockwise around the island uh, of Ireland all the way to Northern Ireland. And so we're going to do the first section of that. We'll be getting to the coastline today and then just kind of making our way up um, clockwise around the island. The weather forecast is a bit mixed. Hopefully it's going to stay like this here today. Um, the sun's kind of peeking out a little bit. Um, yesterday with a lot of rain, so our clothes were still damp this morning. But overall, there is um, a good amount of rain in the forecast. So that's kind of to be expected when you come here, despite the fact that we have early August right now. So guys, this is where we are right now. This is Cork, where my finger points to. And so we're just about northeast of Cork and we're going to make our way to Cork now. And there should be a nice castle, Barney Castle, I think. So the weather stays like this. We finally get to see one in the dry. Yesterday we passed one and it was pouring rain, so it didn't really have a look at it and then after that we'll make our way down to the uh, coast the southern coast and so sort of meet the white Atlantic highway which technically starts further up i think where watford is somewhere here but that part of the stretch didn't look very exciting so we're gonna enter it uh, just south of port <laughs> we have sunshine so it's the first sunshine we see in in ireland like this at least blue sky sunshine you can see the roads are still wet uh, as it was raining here everywhere. That's really cool. The 
the tree line, I mean, it goes all the way to the road. And you've got this like almost tunnel cut in here from all the vehicles. So with the first 100 kilometers on the clock, we're hitting our first sort of site, which is the uh, Blarney Castle and Gardens. Off to see our first site, the Blarney Castle. You buy tickets to get in. Um, you can see it from here. But uh, let's get this done before it starts raining again. And we got a nice ice cream cone too. So we're really close to the ocean and this is the weather we're in. Uh, just like low hanging clouds with uh, yeah some visibility but it's really foggy you can't really see very far so we're not going to be able to see much uh, once we actually make it from the coastline I think but it does look kind of cool it's got the certain mood to it when it's uh, so foggy just won't be able to see much of the coast I suppose but we'll see uh, we'll be there in a few kilometers so this is our first site here where you can see you can't see anything at the moment it's uh say again okay okay golf golf spieler nur nur golf spieler ah aber man sieht eh nix aber man sieht eh nix Man sieht's nur nicht, ne? Oh ja, hier, guck mal. Oh, wow. Wow. Wow, krass, Alter. <lacht> Yo. <lacht> We're going alongside the coastline, which is quite impressive to stand there and just look down and the visibility is pretty low right now it's a bit of a shame but I guess you have to expect that when you come to Ireland that the weather is going to be like this uh, a better part of the time but we'll have a few more days here so there's going to be a few days where it's hopefully not like this we'll uh, continue our journey on it's got another 190 to go at that pace it's going to take us a while so estimate time horizon is 5 30 again so these are long days that we're riding we started out with 350 kilometers to go and um, we still have a good part of it to go up, but it's really hard to see it. Okay. Put the thighs up. That's better. So we're back on really small roads, single tracks. It's got even like weed patches in the middle here. Uh, you don't want to get on those because I'm sure they're very slippery. So we barely had any dry road conditions. It's been continuously raining or drizzling for the entire day so far check it out so there's some water finally so visibility has improved a tiny bit then we can finally see something pretty wet now both of us uh even me with my uh, gore-tex it's just water seeping in the gloves are wet now so we've got another hour to get back to the hotel so we're skipping a couple of points which we would have done with nicer weather but now <laughs> One bottle later. <laughs> oh. 
another day. Uh, we're in a small town on the Wild Atlantic Highway, in a way, I think it's called. Bit of a late start today. 330 kilometers to go today. And since we were riding in the rain yesterday for most of the time, all my stuff is still wet. Uh, the place didn't have a hair dryer. Sometimes that's a good way to just, you know, get the remaining moisture out of your clothes. So my gloves are wet. Um, the jacket is still pretty damp. The only thing that's dry is my boots because I've got these like boot dryers in there um, that help. I try to use them on the gloves. It doesn't really work. Yeah, so I hope this is going to stay dry for a little longer today, maybe then closer. And the helmet is wet too, which is kind of disgusting getting into wet helmets. It'll be along the coastline today. We'll be um, seeing a lot of water, hopefully, um, if the weather conditions are like this. It's nice to actually see this in uh, the sunlight after we had such a rainy day yesterday. So now we're in the last few kilometers on one of those sort of half islands, fingers that are poking out into the sea. Whoa! <laughs> There's definitely gravel on the road. I just uh, hit a patch of gravel. Sheephead's Peninsula is a hidden gem on Ireland's southwest coast and one of the most unspoiled areas in Ireland. Sheepshead is the smallest and the least visited of the five peninsulas on the Wild Atlantic Way. The road leading to Sheepshead Peninsula is an exciting adventure in itself. It twists and turns throughout the picturesque countryside, revealing a breathtaking view of the Atlantic Ocean. As you wind along, the anticipation builds and when you finally reach the peninsula, the dramatic cliffs and serene beauty unfold, making the journey truly memorable. So, we just are returning from our first sight and viewpoint and it's quite nice on the way back too. So the weather's still stable for now, no rain. It's quite windy though and uh, we've got a couple more like that coming up. We're kind of slow today. I mean, we just got about 30 kilometers, 10% of the route and it's um, 11 o'clock now. That doesn't matter. If it gets tight in the end, we can cut the route short. It's not a problem. But some other Germans, I haven't really seen many bikers here yet. So this road has been going on for quite some time, offering this spectacular view. We are on the Ring of Bera, and it's got orange, yellowish arrow, and so we're gonna make all, all the way down to the end of the tip, and then come back up again. 
and it's definitely a lot faster riding than some of the roads that we did yesterday which were much smaller roads where uh, you know also there's less traffic there's more places to pass which is great because on those smaller back roads it's really hard to see and there are just short sections of sort of straight sections where you can finally pass vehicles so that really slows down your travel this seems to be a relatively fast road and that's a nice uh, change of pace so we're still on the ring of Vera and the scenery is starting to get a bit more interesting it's quite a long trip out here to those sort of rings the uh, ring of carry is probably the one that's better known uh, that's on the uh, list for tomorrow of the lesser known ring of bearer same idea it just goes out and goes around in loop and yeah we've been on this for a while we're very close to the western tip i think <laughs> we made it as far as we could to the ring of bearer this is the most western tip and uh, behind me is an island and you used to be able to go across with a cable car which is uh, not in very good shape right now. Uh, it's not operational fixing it at the moment. But yeah, you get a pretty good view of the Atlantic Ocean. It's quite nice here. There it is, no? And now we're heading back. And there was a fish and chips place. Um, I want to check that out. Get something to eat. It is uh, one o'clock now. That was a long trip. <laughs> we stopped at the uh, fish and chips place that's behind us, food truck and they get four different kinds of fish in fresh every day so I'm quite excited about our food and we got an awesome view um, we're not making any progress today we're just hanging out <laughs> enjoying the view and eating good food that's what we do holds a special allure with its rugged charm and natural beauty. This 140 km long scenic coastal drive in Ireland offers a quieter, more authentic experience compared to its famous counterpart, the Ring of Kerry. the way you'll discover untamed landscapes, ancient ruins, colorful villages and stunning ocean panoramas that create a unique and unforgettable journey. So I suppose the Healy Pass is one of the higher elevations that you can access in this part of the island at least on the motorized vehicle at just under 300 meters above sea level which is high because we, you know, we started off at sea level and it's amazing seeing these like overgrown hedges and the trees and the crappy visibility that comes along with it <laughs> But the road's good. It's in excellent shape. So I wonder if we're gonna clear the trees here pretty soon and then let's go a mountain road up the pass up really good. The 
Healy Pass is a must-see destination for motorcycle riders and offers a unique road experience. This winding mountain pass offers a journey like no other in Ireland. Taking you through changing landscapes that shift from lush valleys to rocky heights. Pass was created in 1847 during the famine years in order to help prevent starvation. It is named after Time Michael Healy, a politician from Cork who served as the first Governor General of the first Irish Free State. The Healy Pass is usually not very busy with tourists, with so many visitors flocking to the Dingle Way and the Ring of Kerry. The Barrow Peninsula is often overlooked. It's also worth mentioning that the pass, while located in the vicinity of the Ring of Barra, is not technically part of that driving circuit. reaches an elevation of 298 meters at its peak. While it might not reach the towering heights of many alpine roads such as those found in the Swiss or French Alps, it holds its own charm with a nice change of pace on this trip. Wild Atlantic Way. So we're on the right route. The Healy Pass was quite a surprise. You don't really expect a proper mountain pass in Ireland, especially on the downhill side. It was really, really cool. So this was so awesome, just the way off the beaten path. <laughs> Just what you mean. <laughs> this is Price Sleep. This pass was one of my favorite passes on this entire trip. Trips like these, I really enjoy the smaller backcountry roads. Christ Sleep is a mountain pass in Ireland and is located on the border between the counties of Cork and Kerry. The single track road over Price Sleep is very narrow, partially with a soft surface and a green strip in the center and a very steep section north of the summit. The pass reaches an elevation of 463 meters and offers breathtaking views of the surrounding valleys and hills. So, we made it better part of the day without rain and now it's starting to rain on the last 90 kilometers we've got left. It sucks. 
So it looks like the Ring of Kerry has dried up a little bit, the pavement. So we uh, just stopped for coffee. This is like a campground or something. It's quite nice, actually, this little bay here. And it's another 50 kilometers to get to the hotel. And it's going to take about 40 minutes to get there. It's definitely a very scenic part of the island. The Ring of Kerry. It smells like um, ocean. I mean, what the f people? What a beautiful morning. So we have an early start today. It's eight o'clock local time. And we'll be taking a ferry across that water gap there. And it just got to the other side. So I guess we'll have to wait here. Huh? So onto the ferry we go. All the way. I can pay this together. You can pay it? Yeah. Uh, one way, is it? It's one way, yeah. One way, yeah. So we just made it onto the short ferry to just get across this uh, two kilometer water gap. Uh, it saves about 10 or 15 minutes of riding and it's a cool experience. I mean, this just goes to the other side, stays there for a couple minutes, loads and unloads, does this every day, <laughs> all day long. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, you see in the background, this is where we were staying the last night, a tiny little sort of harbor town it was pretty cool um, the place is quite a happening place too so today we're gonna do the ring of Kerry. we did the first part of it yesterday and we can do the remaining part uh, this morning hopefully avoiding uh, the masses of tourists that you can expect here uh, that's at least what i read about that this is the most popular area in ireland so having an early start is going to help us plus it's kind of a long day today um, if things go well we'll be hitting the inch beach uh, that's a beach where you can take your motorcycle onto the beach. Uh, that should be really cool. Ha, <laughs> cool. Nice, easy. Nice and easy. What a beautiful day. Yeah, there's something to be said about leaving earlier in the day. It's quite nice when it's so, so calm. Some of these places have quite a bit of traffic because it's quite amazed by how many cars and squeeze through a small town <laughs> some traffic jams in the middle of nowhere really so we're gonna make a few um, miles now and then i'm sure we'll find a place to have breakfast it's gonna be late breakfast but some of these places serve breakfast so late that if that determines the time schedule it really sucks so um yeah we decided to 
Let's get going. Ja, weil wir die glotzen, ne? Ja, du irritierst dich schon. Also, ey. Ja, aber so geile Motorräder haben die auch schon noch nie gesehen. Also, geil, Alter, KTM. <lacht> Was ist denn das hier? Da ist die Key Wishing Bridge, oder? Ist, ah, da ist es. Alles klar. Ja. Das ist ein geiles oder? Ja. So, we're heading up to one of the main tourist attractions, Gap of Dunlow, the Wishing Bridge. Yeah, you can see it here. Tourists are getting brought up by horse carriage because buses are not allowed up here. And the guy at the store said that it gets really crazy in about half an hour. So if you want to beat the crowd, uh, it's better to go now. We're hoping for a little better weather to let the drone fly. I'm not sure if this is going to be good enough. But you can see there's all this horse shit <laughs> and it's very slippery on the road. Legend has it that this throne bridge nestled within the gap of Dunlop possesses magical powers. Those who cross the bridge are granted a wish, provided they are making the wish without speaking a word until they have safely crossed to the other side. Dunlow was formed during the last ice age. This picturesque glacier valley was carved by retreating ice and subsequent melt water. Historically, the Gap of Dunlow has been a significant route for locals and travelers alike. It served as a crucial trade route between the regions of Kerry and the Black Valley. Dunno was the most stunning scenic ride of this entire trip, where every twist and turn unveiled breathtaking vistas that left a lasting memory. Well, it's a great start into the day. It's uh, only 10.40 at the moment, and uh, we already have the first 100 kilometers under our belt. And it's a nice mix of smaller roads, nature parks, and some of the faster roads like these. Really cool. So after we made a lot of kilometers this morning, we keep pulling over to just check out the amazing views uh, that you get here. And the road is kind of nice too. For a change. You can actually see the road. You know, a couple turns ahead, which you can with all the hedges around. Wow, it's beautiful here.
smallest gap in Ireland is the scenic viewpoint along the Ring of Kerry. It's situated at an elevation of around 260 meters above sea level. The twisting road that leads to Mall's Gap presents an exhilarating journey featuring a slope of approximately 10 degrees, rendering it particularly ideal for motorcycle enthusiasts seeking both adventure and breathtaking scenery. So this is a nice change of pace, a nice mountain road, like you find it in other places in Europe. A bit faster and a bit easier to see. Wet, well, of course. <laughs> and it's been in sort of the occasional rain here. But it's nice. So lots of variety in today's tour from so the mountain passes, coastline, national parks. If things go well and the weather plays along, we'll be hitting the beach as well. Oh, there's Inch Beach to our left. That little, uh, you know, obviously, that's the beach. And supposedly you can go there with motorized vehicles. So I'll be very curious what the sand conditions are, how that is on the motorcycle. And people are just on the beach. That is uh, weird. <laughs> and it's busy too. It's quite busy. <laughs> God damn it! Riding my motorcycle along the beach was a dream come true, an experience that had long been on my motorcycle bucket list. <laughs> Inch Beach, situated in the southeast of Dingle Peninsula, is one of the most beautiful beaches in Ireland. Yes! What sets this beach apart is its unique possibility for motorized vehicles to drive and park on the beach itself, making it a rarity in Europe where such access is usually not allowed. Oh, hier ist er voll weich. Krass. Krass. Nee. Ach, die Scheiße. Despite the fact that it was relatively easy to ride on the sand, there are those spots that have deeper sand. Äh, ja, wahrscheinlich gute Idee. Ja, weil da ist gut. Ich auch mit den Ah. Ah. Sehr schön. Yippie!
little town. You can definitely tell there's a lot more tourism in this area here. Look at this. Looks quite nice, actually. So, we fueled up the bikes and we washed them down because we had lots of uh, salty sand on the bikes from a little excursion to the beach. Now, riding on the beach, that's always like a bucket list item for me. Uh, always something I wanted to do. There aren't many places in Europe where you can take your motorcycle onto the beach and just ride it along the beach. Now, Inch Beach, it's part of Ring of Dingle. Right after you go clockwise, come from the Ring of Kerry and go into the next peninsula. That's where the Inch Beach is. Slayhead Drive is considered one of Ireland's most scenic routes. As the road follows the rugged coastline, it unveils an amazing panorama where the Atlantic Ocean merges with the unspoiled landscape. takes you on the journey through historic sites and famous Hollywood filming locations, including the Skellig Islands on the southwestern horizon, which were featured in the Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens. Pier is a picturesque harbor on the western edge of the Dingle Peninsula. It serves as a gateway to the dramatic Blasket Islands. The pier offers an iconic view of the rugged coastline and the vast Atlantic Ocean. The surrounding cliffs and rolling hills enhance the pier's charm, making it a favorite spot for both locals and tourists for a glimpse into Ireland's coastal beauty. So we just saw the Duncan Pier, seems to be quite the tourist attraction for some reason. Uh, it's just a pier going down the cliffs into the water and uh, we just sat on the cliffs, had a coffee. We're just coming off the Connor Pass and this side seems a lot more interesting because it's much smaller of a road. <laughs> the other one was just a fast road. I like these better. Maybe not the most exciting pass to go up and down, but the view is great. We made it to our accommodation location today. Forgot the name of the town. <laughs> um, it's got ending so fast. So, 5.30, that's, uh, that's early for us. And it's on the water, which is great. And it's quite happening, it seems. Ice cream's popular. So I'll be staying, or well, we'll be staying at a bed and breakfast, and I guess there's plenty of places to grab a bite to eat. Man, that's a brand new helmet. Just got it yeah. a week ago. Almost. 
was it like eight years old or something? It has to be the most useful thing to bring along with a roll of tape. The most beautiful thing on this helmet, yeah? If you have a BMW, you have to bring two rolls of that stuff. And you got the <laughs> <laughs> It is 8.40 in the morning, it says 9.40, so CT time. So without us knowing, we were witness uh, to quite the tragedy yesterday. We saw a helicopter coming in, we didn't know what it was. Um, now today we know it was a Coast Guard helicopter with two adults that drowned in the ocean. Apparently one of them went in, was struggling and then her brother came to help and in the process they both passed away. Quite sad. Made the national news this morning we saw it at the bed and breakfast. So anyway, we've got about a half an hour ride to a uh, short ferry. What a 20 minute ferry. I was going to shortcut uh, today's route a little bit. The biggest highlight today will be the Cliff of Mohair. So that's um, probably the best known sort of cliffs in Ireland. This is our ferry. It's gonna get us across here in about 20 minutes. Oh, I got a nice snack shop here. How oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, we met another biker from Italy. So, one of the few bikers that we saw on this trip. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. You know, you're driving right to the very top here. Okay. Yeah. This is where you are. Yeah. And uh, at the gate here at the corner, yeah. follow that path up along and you can park at the highest bike. With the bike? With the bike. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. Very good. And that's five euros? Each. Each. Okay, no problem. Go ahead. So we're, we're here and we just go that right. way. And park up here then. Oh, wow. And then you can go for a little walk to the left. Yeah. And you can say you've seen the cliffs and water. Perfect. That's very good. Back, you can walk back to the very end and come back. And Sounds good. Cool. You're coming down. Oh, okay. coming down? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. We get to ride the bikes up all the way, uh, basically to the top, uh, to see the cliffs of Moher. That is awesome. So, secret little tip. Don't take the uh, big parking lot, the one exit, one beforehand, and then uh, you get to go all the way to the top, which is really cool. The oh, and it's, we're not the only ones here. <laughs> yes. But wie geil ist das denn, ey? Das ist die Empfehlung auch von dem äh, ja. von dem anderen, ne? Ja, aber es ist geil, bis hier hoch. Ja, super. Mega geile Nummer. The cliffs of Mover stand as a magnificent showcase of Ireland's coastal beauty. Extending for approximately 8 kilometers along the Atlantic coastline, these imposing cliffs reach heights up to 214 meters. Whether not the highest cliffs in Ireland, they are by far the most visited. With 1.6 million visitors in 2022, they are the second most visited tourist attraction in Ireland after the Guinness Storehouse in Dublin, which attracted 1.7 million people. This mess here. I mean, there were like two cars and us as two bikes. And this is where you could go instead with all the freaking tourists. So, yeah, that was definitely the better choice. For the small little by road to the main road that takes us along the coastline, and the landscape is definitely changing quite a bit from sort of the early areas we've seen to this now, the sort of bare mountain top. It's almost like there's snow on top of that mountain. Of course it isn't, it's warm enough. But it's pretty interesting scenery around here. Also, I like it when the um, sort of area opens up a little bit, you know, the hedges and all the greenery, that's great, but you can't really see and appreciate the landscape around you. Here it is great, you can you can get a good view of everything.
Now that I've got this really interesting rock here, it looks very different to the other parts of the island that we have seen so far. It's really bare, but beautiful. Clifton is a picturesque region in the county Galway. It is characterized by its serene lakes, lush landscapes and natural beauty. Nestled amidst the 12 Benz mountain range, this area offers a tranquil escape for nature enthusiasts and of course motorcycle riders seeking remote Irish landscapes. We're in Clifton right now. That was a cute little town, but there's so many of those smaller places. Um, it's not even a very small place, but they're really busy with traffic. Here, yeah, right? Okay. So, Sky Road is next. Then it's supposed to be a very scenic drive. Then the moment we leave town, we should uh, hit the sky drive. I'm very curious to see what that's all about. Let's see the sky road. It's about a 10, 11, 10 kilometer loop. Riding the sky road in Clifton is a special experience for motorcycle riders. This winding coastal route offers breathtaking vistas of the Atlantic Ocean and rugged landscapes, combining the thrill of the ride with the beauty of the scenery. The elevated vantage points and exhilarating twists and turns made this ride an unforgettable journey for us. I'm about 10 minutes out from my accommodation tonight and because Sebastian booked his accommodation so late just a week before we left, it was a short notice decision to come along to the strip. Tonight we don't have the accommodation in the same location, so he has his about 10 minute drive away, which is on the route. So we're going to say goodbyes and we're going to have some solo nights <laughs> and then uh, find something to eat and then I'll have to leave a bit earlier tomorrow and pick him up. It's a, been an amazing day, uh, with lots of variety so far, and we're lucky with the weather. I hope it's going to stay like this for a few more days. But it was a fantastic day. See the island. Oh, the pub here is supposedly the only place where you can get something to eat. Well, if we find it. Oliver's. Oliver's pub. Perfect. It's Sunday morning, I just left my accommodation and this is very close to where we had dinner last night, I saw the two ships and I'm now picking up Sebastian who is located about 15 minutes from here. It's early August and it seems like places do book out here quite a bit uh, at this time of year, that's also what the B&B owner said. Uh, people tend to book in advance and he couldn't find a place nearby so he just uh, picked a place down the road 
Also, I had a bit of a late start. Breakfast starts late here. <laughs> Most places like 8 or 8.30. Yesterday we left at 8. And it's already closer to 9.30 uh, by the time I'm getting to Sebastian's place. We got another 300 kilometers on the clock today. And we'll make our way to Northern Ireland today. So we'll be completing the Wild Atlantic Way today. And then we're traveling through Northern Ireland for a little bit. And then it's over to Scotland Monday morning. Good morning. Good morning. I want to come Hi. Yes, good morning. Guten Morgen. Jetzt weiß ich, wie es ist, wenn sie es morgens zieht in so einem BB. Alter, ich hatte hier einen Laden. Selber Frühstück machen, selber abwaschen. Echt? Ja, es ist so mehr so ein Hostel. Für 150 Tacken? Nee, 99 waren das hier. Okay. Aber <lacht> dennoch, komisch. So, we just had a quick peek at the. Uh at the Abbey. It's quite nice, there's a little church there. The Kylemore Abbey and Victorian Gardens is the home of the Benedictine Order of Nuns in Ireland who have lived there since 1920. It was originally called Kylemore Castle and it was built around 1863 as a residence for a wealthy English politician. So especially on the uh, north western section of the Wild Atlantic Way, we had these somewhat faster roads, also with better pavement. There quite a few of those yesterday, and this one here, so they open up and it's just a joy to ride. Nice little town, the usual traffic. So we've been on this, on these faster roads quite some time in this scenery, which looks so different to what we saw the first few days when we were in Ireland. And we do now see the occasional motorcycles on the road. Not nearly as many as I thought I would see here, but um, there are some coming up. And this area reminds me actually a little bit of Montana, US. Just these open spaces, mountains, and then this change of sort of prairie, grassland, and just having sort of a view like this. Ha <laughs> ha! Yay! Check out the cemetery coming up to our right. We're back at the coast. It's like 19 degrees right now, it's sunny. Pretty Head is a must-see for sheer natural wonder. Perched on island's Atlantic coast, it boasts a striking sea stack standing like a sentinel against the waves. Reaching a height of nearly 50 meters, the rock is visible from afar and one of the striking landmarks of the wild Atlantic way.
are nearing the end of today's ride, about 30 minutes from our final destination tonight, which will be a northern island. There's one more site, I think a castle of some kind, on the way. Let's see uh, how touristy that is, if we're gonna check it out or not. Um, it's been a lot of these sort of faster roads, and also for the big ones, they're not so much fun. But some of the smaller fast roads, they were actually fun. So, we'll be Northern Ireland tonight. The Classyborn Castle, situated in the County Sligo, is an impressive neo-Gothic structure perched on the edge of the Atlantic. Built in the 19th century, it was home to Lord Mountbatten, a British statesman. The castle's stunning location, surrounded by lush landscapes and overlooking the sea, adds to its allure. So we found this uh, nice spot here. Cool. Oh, we got a good view too. The castle and the beach. Perfect. We got Guinness. And <laughs> You can see Guinness. Guinness and chips. Cheers. Cheers. So this should be Northern Ireland, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I have no idea, guys. Das jetzt noch. Habe ich es nicht gerade gelesen? Fiddlestone, da. It's the first time we actually have a proper beer in motorcycle clothes, as we usually do every time we ride. But um, this is the first time on this tour at the halfway mark, which is today. So cheers. Yes. Basic. We're starting in Northern Ireland, but we'll go back to Ireland now and then I think come back to Northern Ireland again. Um, anyway, this is the place we stayed at yesterday. Um, had a few pints of Guinness and we're having a late start this morning. Didn't have breakfast until nine, so we have to ride a little faster than usual. <laughs> to make the 350 kilometer ride today, so it's gonna be a long ride. For our last full day in Ireland, we'll be riding from Bellic to Ballantoy. So that was Sleaf League. Really cool cliffs. Very, very windy up here. Sleaf League cliffs are among the highest sea cliffs in Europe rising to almost 600 meters in height, which bring them up to almost three times the height of the Cliffs of Moher. While the Cliffs of Moher are more accessible and visited by larger crowds due to their proximity to major tourist routes, Sleeve League Cliff offers a more off-the-beaten-path experience. The view from top provides awe-inspiring vistas of the Atlantic Ocean and the surrounding landscapes. So now we're taking some smaller back roads to continue our journey. Quite nice actually, change of pace. Go through the uh, back country. Nice. <laughs> And lots and lots of sheep here.
12.30 local time, we just saw the first coffee stop. We still have 220 kilometers to go. So, off we go. We're back in Northern Ireland and somehow we couldn't find a place to eat on the go. So we went to this uh, grocery store and this is uh, our setup <laughs> for lunch. It's uh, kind of late, it's like what, 2.30 or something? 3.30. <laughs> so it's super late, we haven't really had anything proper to eat. So um, with an hour, another hour to ride, it's time for food. Das verkauft man dann die Chinesen hier. Mhm. Basically going through uh, the dark hedges, probably known from Game of Thrones, if you guys have seen this. And it's basically a bunch of trees and it's very popular. As you can see with tours. There isn't much tourism here in Northern Ireland. It was pretty um, unspectacular to get here. But this must be it. It's probably us. Get all the uh, fans of the show having to see this. I mean, it is kind of cool, but we we're surprised to see so many people here. I mean, they, they haul them in in bus loads. So... Domdu's castle, perched dramatically on the northern coast of County Antrim in Northern Ireland, is a marvel that seamlessly blends history and stunning surroundings. The castle's precarious position on the cliff edge overlooking the sea makes it an architectural wonder. With a history dating back to the 13th century, it has witnessed centuries of tumultuous events, adding a layer of intrigue. Giant's Causeway, we didn't actually walk all the way down there. It seemed like a long walk for a bunch of rocks and sometimes I don't really understand. Um, there was a major, major tourist, uh, tourism center, you know, bus parking, car parking. There's definitely cooler things to see than this. So yeah, go figure, doesn't matter. So we just had the drone fly a little bit high up in the air. So we're about a minute out from our accommodation and this looks quite nice here. Especially now, it's so late with the uh, setting sun. That's really cool. So this is probably the coolest place we stayed at on this trip so far. This is Northern Ireland. And they've done a lot of the Game of Thrones shots here in Northern Ireland. And they've got this door that's cut out of wood from the dark hedges. Uh, which we went to today and that's the entrance door here another beautiful day in northern ireland we stayed here at the fullerton arms which i thought was the uh, the best accommodation we've had so far uh, it's a really nice place, it doesn't look like much from the outside, but uh, the rooms were great, food was awesome, they got this whole like Game of Thrones theme in there for those guys that have watched the show, I haven't, I've only seen a few of those, but yeah, it was really cool. So Ireland definitely showed itself from its nicest side, 
Now we're gonna check out the harbor real quick because we still have a little bit of time before we have to hit the ferry. And that ferry will take us to Scotland. So it'll be goodbye to Ireland today. That's a nice send off this good weather. So apparently they shot a lot of the, I don't know if all of it, but a good part of the Game of Thrones series here in Northern Ireland. So there's a lot of spots here that's probably, it helps the tourism here because there are some parts where there's hardly any people and then there's some on sort of the top sides where you have lots of tourists. So probably helps the tourism here. The dark hedges are one of them. Oh, I think the harbor was also in Game of Thrones. We watched a video yesterday on some of the locations and that's uh, that's one of them. Obviously they CGI'd a lot of it into it, so it, it'll be hard to see that it was actually part of the, of the show. Das war da auch in Game of Thrones, oder? Das war der Hafen, der gestern gezeigt hat. Ja, das ist genau da. Oh, scratched. But yeah, here you go. Now after seeing all this, I kind of have to check out the show now. <laughs> Dem ganzen Algen, die da oben schwimmen. Aber oh, sieht trotzdem ganz nett aus. Last time we get to ride the beautiful coastal roads of Northern Ireland before we make our way to the ferry that will bring us to Scotland. So we're continuing on on this beautiful sort of coastal road and now we kind of have to hurry it up a bit because uh, we still need to catch the ferry and we don't want to make it there on the last minute. So waiting at the ferry terminal, these are the last few meters on Irish, northern Irish ground to be exact. Sebastian Spike doesn't start, so we need to try to get it started somehow. This is here aufschieben. Okay, can't be right, right? The Schalter is oder? Yeah, the Schalter is going to be Ja. Das uh, schreibt mir so, als wenn er nicht richtig sitzt. Fuck, Alter. So after a few more tries, we. Uh we're able to start Sebastian's bike again. Not sure what the pro obviously there's something off with the switch. It's kind of it's kind of funny, um, but at least we can make it to the ferry now. Hi, how's it going? Not too bad. What about yourself? Good. Finally, that we got the bike started again. It wasn't gonna start. Yeah, yeah we turned it off here and then it wouldn't start. We tried and tried and tried, and now we won't turn it off until it's on the ferry. You know what I'm saying? Huh? <laughs> the stuff you need on the bicycle, the oh, motorcycle oh, trip. Yeah, absolutely. Are you not carrying anything dangerous or hazardous? No, no. Thank you. Up to the road, about the top, back down, lane number 11. Like, thank you. <laughs> Oh, there are the bikes here. We're not the only ones. <laughs> 